Yo, what's up guys, and welcome back to a brand new HMS Minis video. Today, we're going to be talking about Peko Bagnaya. What is going on with Magic Peko? Number one Peko on the Ducati. Second weekend in a row now that he has crashed out of the feature race, seemingly with no apparent explanation. He even went on to blame the bike. Of all things to blame, he went to blame the bike. Um, in Austin, Texas, we saw the frustration from Peko in the interviews after the race, saying it was 100% not his fault. You know, he done nothing wrong, and it's all the bike's fault, which is a very interesting sort of claim there from Peko Bergnay. I can't imagine Ducati are too impressed. I think it's obvious that Ducati have the, you know, the best bike in in MotoGP uh, right now, and I think it's obvious that Peko Bergnay is probably one of the best riders in the world especially on the uh, on the ducati but for some reason we are seeing this you know happen a little bit too often for you know peko's liking and ducati's liking where he's just coming off of the bike and not even understanding why which is never a good thing in racing obviously you want to know why you crash to not do that again you know when you do the same thing 10 times and one time out of 10 it goes horribly wrong and you have no explanation as to why you know that is that's never a position you really want to be in especially in this kind of you know environment and sport you know on, 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 a, on a bike going at these speeds through these corners and stuff you know you want to know what's going to happen you want to trust your bike you want to trust the machinery under you and um seemingly peko at the moment is in a bit of a weird sort of mind space where you, one day he really likes the bike and then the next day, he really doesn't like the bike. And, <laughs> you know, he comes off of the bike and he'll blame the bike. Doesn't seem to blame himself too much, um, which, which is a bit interesting. And uh, to be honest, if you, if you look at the crash, I mean, I think, I, I obviously, I don't know what breaking markers and, you know, what he was doing on other laps. But I think you could definitely sort of say that he was pushing a little bit more than the previous laps because you did start to see that gap with Alex Rins just extend a little bit you know he was I think he was trying to get rid of you know Alex Rins um, and, and pull away basically like he done in the sprint race I think that's what he was trying to go for and uh, unfortunately obviously it didn't work out now I, you know whether it's rider error or just the bike <laughs> just not wanting to bike anymore I don't know but it is a very interesting, you know, situation going on with Peko because we saw this last year. And uh, albeit he didn't do that comeback of 97 points to win the championship. But this is a new era of MotoGP. This is, a, you know, we've got sprint races. We've got two races every single weekend. Um, you can't just be crashing out of the lead on, 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 on the Ducati, the best bike on the grid. And with the number one plate on the bike and everything, you know, you can't just be crashing out willy-nilly out of these races. 45 points is a lot, a lot, a lot of points. Especially this season, like I say, a sprint, you know, format. We've got two races every single weekend, 37 points available every weekend. You can't really afford to be coming off your bike, um, you know, especially when you're out, you know, leading comfortably. Uh, you, you just can't be doing that and uh, you know Peko it's not something that's even a rare sight to see like I say last year 97 points um, I think it was behind and you know he did do the comeback in the end big up him uh, did win the championship but this year you know the, the same tactics they're just not going to apply and uh, it is a shame honestly it is a shame um, you know, to see another another crash like this from, from Peko Bagnaya and the frustration from Peko and Ducati, obviously. No one really knowing, you know, what's going on. You know, is it the bike? Is it the rider? Is he just pushing a little bit too much? Was he just a little bit offline? You know, there could have been so many factors. You know, obviously, turn two has caught out quite a lot of riders throughout the weekend. You know, it's the first time you sort of chuck it left in a while. And, um, uh, right, sorry. So, um, yeah, it's... It's, it's an interesting kerfuffle uh, for, for Peko Bagnaya, especially, you know, after the race. It really did surprise me, to be honest, when he uh, put the blame more on the bike than himself. I thought I thought that was, you know, a, a, bit, a bit of an interesting comment um, uh, from Peko. Like I say, I don't imagine Ducati would be too impressed with that because it's quite obvious that they have the best bike. Uh, on the grid so um obviously I, I can't imagine that sat there you know too happy hearing hearing their world champion you know complain about the bike but um like i say it, it, it is a very interesting one 
to to try and decipher, you know, Pekka, Bagnaya and Chikati. Why does he keep coming off the bike? You know, he won't crash throughout the weekend. It's all fine. Qualifying, sprint, all of this is fine. And then he'll get to the main race and he'll just come off. And then he doesn't know why. You know, it, it's, it's unacceptable, uh, like he said. And, um, yeah, hopefully we can, well, um, we can see him iron out these errors. I mean, we did talk about it a couple of weeks ago with the season opener, you know, how important it would be for Pekka Bagnaya to not do what he'd done last year. And then in the following two races, he's going to done exactly that. So, um, yeah, interesting situation for Pekka. Also good for their rivals and a little bit lucky also for Pekka with, you know, sort of the main big dogs, you would say. Uh, being out right now with injuries and stuff so we got a little bit lucky with that but um, yeah Pekka Bagnaya he really needs to sort this out and uh, blaming the bike I don't know man it doesn't really sit well with me because you know considering Ducati everything they've done for him and you know obviously won the championship last year and they built this absolutely amazing rocket ship looking well i was gonna say bike it don't really look like a bike anymore to be fair the ducati just looks you know insane you, you know they've built this incredible bike and um and then when you got your rider moaning it is an ideal but um yeah guys what are your thoughts on all of this do you think it was the bike just just letting go or do you think it was a more a rider error i mean i know a rider will never admit when they commit an error um, you know, you always look for something else to blame other than yourself. But to be honest, to me, it literally just looked like Alex Rins was just, you know, applying the pressure and it, it might have got to Pekko a little bit. But um, yeah, guys, what are your thoughts? Leave it down in the comments. Leave a like and subscribe for more content as always. And I'll see you with some brand new videos very soon.